This is the Tech Phantom and today I'll be giving you hopefully some helpful tips for the installation and PC settings of Dark Souls for the PC. So let's get started. This is the beginning screen and let's take a look at the PC settings. The first thing you'll see is that the resolution can go all the way up to 1920 by 1080. Um, you can run it as low as 800 by 600 and everything in between. And uh, I am running a, uh, the mod that increases the, uh, uh, the resolution, but that doesn't have any effect on what the uh, options are going to be on this uh, menu selection. One thing that I do recommend is to not run anti-aliasing or motion blur. I was having issues with anti-aliasing prior to installation of the mod. It was giving me sort of a frosted window effect. Everything was blurry. And after installation of the mod, look what's happening when I turn on anti-aliasing. I'm going to just quickly load a save here. And by the way, the, the load screens on the Dark Souls PC version are much quicker than the console version. All right, so you can see what happened. The, um, the game has collapsed to just uh, a, a small screen. So let's go ahead and set the settings back to where they were. Let me turn off anti-aliasing. And the game looks great. So uh, I definitely recommend not using anti-aliasing. I definitely recommend uh, using the mod, although it is a mod, so you have to be careful with it. Make sure you scan it, make sure uh, that everything is, uh, is uh, good with it uh, before you use it. But, um, um, and after you've installed the mod, uh, the game does look better than in the console version. There is a lot more detail, the highlights are quite a bit nicer, and the shadows are quite a bit nicer too. So I'm going to tell you the system settings that are actually working for me. Uh, I'm running Windows 7, uh, home, uh, home version, uh, Service Pack 1, uh, build 7601. Um, I have a uh, Intel uh, i7 2600K CPU running at 3.4 gigahertz. It's overclockable, but I am not. I haven't overclocked it or anything like that. And my graphics card is an ATN Radeon HD 5800 series. And uh, I don't have a huge amount of RAM. I think I have uh, uh, 16 uh, 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 gigs of RAM or something like that. Uh, so if, if I know that the processor is actually a, a pretty decent processor, although some of the newer ones now are, are, are much, much better. But it is a decent processor. The graphics card, though, is nothing special. It's the middle of the pack. So, um, you know, as long as you have these requirements or better, you should have no problems running the game with absolutely no hiccups. And after you've installed the mod, it looks absolutely great. I got to tell you, I really do love uh, um, the way the game looks with the mod. Um, I did try installations of the game on other systems. I tried a, an XP system and it, I couldn't get it to boot. I also tried a, uh, a Windows 7 laptop. And I also tried, it was about two years old, and a one-year-old Windows uh, uh, 8 laptop that had Windows Evaluation in it. And um, it, the game actually ran for a little bit on both of those systems, but unfortunately, uh, Windows Live um, screwed things up. Um, so there's really not much nice that I could say about Windows Live other than it's going to allow you to have uh, more saves because you can create different profiles and you can have up to 10 saves in each profile. Uh, so you can have more profiles than what you could in the console version of the PS3 for example. But let me tell you, it's a uh, uh, pain in the butt because it did corrupt um, the installation of the game in a couple of different systems that really should have been able to run the game. Um, as far as the controller, um, you know, you can use an Xbox controller if you were using uh, the 360 before. You can download some drivers and use a PS3 controller, although that's sort of a labor-intensive operation. I'm actually just using a Logitech uh, wired pad that looks very, very similar to the PS3. It's the Logitech dual action uh, uh, USB pad and I'm very happy with it. Um, I can't remap the buttons so it took me a little bit to get used to the new controls but uh, uh, other than that the, I'm not having any issues with the control whatsoever. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is show you just very briefly 
some of, some of the other menu options. Uh, as far as key settings, you have a lot more options than you did uh, for the console, but remember that the game was uh, straight port, so even though there's uh, there's more options now and you can use the keyboard, it's, go it's impossible to play the, the game with the keyboard and mouse. Um, you really need uh, a pad to play it. But here are the options. You have uh, basically um, a, a screen that lets you remap actions to your keys for running and walking. Then you have the camera options. Um, the mouse also controls the camera when you move it back and forth. Uh, then you have uh, options for how to switch equipment and more op options here and how to open and display the menu and some menu controls. And unfortunately you can only map these functions to the keyboard uh, keys. You can't map them to a joystick or, uh, or a gamepad, or at least I wasn't able to do that. Alright guys, so that is going to conclude this video. I hope you found this useful. Um, you do need to use Steam when you install the game, which, you know, it's not a big deal. Steam is pretty, um, uh, pretty robust. Uh, I can't say the same thing about Windows Live. It's, it's really a shame that you have to use Windows Live to run the game. Uh, if you have a newer system, if you have Windows 7, um, with uh, the six uh, the service pack one you should be okay if you have a decent graphics card and a decent processor you're not gonna have any problems playing this game so anyway this is the tech phantom signing off